Hello and welcome to another update stream for the Operation Candyland multiplayer server currently running on TCS Open Beta. Uh, this is currently the sixth run of the mission uh, and it is day six. So let's take a quick look in the Discord uh, to get a kind of mission update. So what we can see here is the current primary objective is a blue transport fleet is outside of Sochi preparing to unload heavy armor units. Uh, ground units are pushing forward to secure the docks on Sochi's coastline, provide air and ground defense until unloading is complete. So there we can see the ships and the ground units on their way forward, but we could also see red is also pushing to Sochi to try to block that. Secondary objective, ground uh, blue ground forces are continuing to stage around uh, Krasnodar uh, Pash, Pek, Pashkovsky uh, provide protection for uh, for them from air to ground threats uh, additionally destroy defensive units at both air bases in preparation for the ground assault uh, so the battle in the north has actually been kind of a seesaw battle uh, yesterday red had pushed almost all the way to Isprivania then blue came back and pushed and some blue units that had been outside uh, Krasnodar retreated and then killed all of the red units that made their way to Maykop and it's just been really back and forth up there um, but I think uh, when we go to look at the mission we're gonna see uh, uh, some things have changed around there so uh, exiting discord and then let's jump into the server and decide what we're gonna do for today I've uh, been adding some, uh, you know, code updates and whatnot. Um, now the uh, SAM uh, sites, both for blue and red, are going to be a little bit smarter about uh, when they turn on and activate and turn off. And it's going to try to do a little bit better to uh, entrap um, uh, folks uh, rather than just kind of being always on and very obvious to seed strikes. It's not going to be OP and it's not going to have... Uh, any knowledge that uh, it doesn't have via its own sensors so it's not like the game code is going to say you know turn on when there's a human right above it or anything hacky like that uh, but it's just going to try to emulate uh, a little better um, you know kind of real life tactics and, and flipping on and flipping off all right so taking a quick look here uh, at the current state of the f10 map we can see that blue has captured krasnodar is cool. Uh, we could see that the uh, transport fleet is unloading. We could see red starting to uh, build up outside of Sochi to try and kill any of these units as they move forward. Uh, we can also see the, see the blue group that pushed forward to Glenzik is kind of holding its own out there, but at this point it doesn't have a command unit attached to it, so they can't uh, advance their attack or, or coordinate their attack yet. So they'll still need to, still need to wait for that doesn't look like there's one on the way on the road currently so it, they may be there for a while um, up in the north uh, I want to say that there may have been a command unit not 100% sure uh, but they'll need that in order to attack Krasnodar so we can kind of decide what do we feel like doing here um, I think I might like to try fly the Huey and I think we probably will have Krasnodar Peshkovsky as a launching point for that and so it'll be a quick flight and we'll just do some donuts over Krasnodar and uh, let the miniguns fly. So let's see if my suspicions are true. Yes, they are. All right. And again, that's just how it works. Like there's, you know, just try to take a look at the map, see what's going on, and just invent something for yourself to do. Uh, so that way you can. Uh, uh, have an impact on the mission and of course stupid me didn't start his track IR to uh, launch with. I think this is probably the third video in a row where uh, I didn't have it on so let me just restart real quick it should only take a quick second I uh, tried playing the Huey last night, uh, kind of in a similar role back at Maycop, and every time I finally got the chopper started, an Su-330 was flying over the airfield and dropped cluster munitions on me every time. 
and I think I spawned in and died four times straight when I was finally just like, you know what, it ain't my night, and uh, and gave up on that. So hopefully we'll have a little bit uh, better luck uh, right now. All right, so multiplayer. Hopefully our favorite favorite TID server shows up at the top of the list and make our life easy. There it is. Join. A Miles just commented in chat. Uh, the server looks awesome. Love the persistent campaign. Thank you very much uh, for that feedback. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if, if you play and, and you ever have an opportunity to come join, um, absolutely just join up and do whatever. You don't have to talk to anybody if you don't want to. You could just kind of come on and do your own thing. Or uh, some guys are starting to hang out in the Discord on voice together. So it's really just kind of pick your own pace. All right, cool. So track IR is working, so let's recenter here. And let's get our, uh, I like to make custom knee boards for myself to just kind of distill the most obvious uh, things that need to be done to make my life easier. Uh, I might put these in Discord eventually because sometimes people ask about them, but uh, right control and C to close the door. Top panel, battery on, alarm off, fuel on, inverter to main, oh. all right, generator on, close the hat, uh, twist throttle to full, and then down, all right, uh, force trim on, hydraulics on, Hold the home key until we're at above 30% RPM. And this really isn't a, uh, a, a playthrough of the, hum, the um, Huey. Um, I'm just uh, kind of reading it as I go. And you know, if, if you're getting into the Huey or maybe you miss a step sometimes, hopefully this is a little bit helpful. But I am myself by no means a uh, Huey expert yet. Alright, above 30%, let go of the home key. Uh, IFF master to norm. That's this guy. Done. Align compass. So we're currently at, let's call it 130. radar alt switch to on top panel set our radar alt so I'm gonna set uh, 10 feet uh, just so as uh, did I miss that I think I got it huh what did I forget because that should light up and be fine Battery on, RPM off, fuel on, invader main, in, inverter main, generator on, twist, force, hydraulic, start engine, IFF, align comes, compass, radar switch, radar alt switch on. I thought I did that. Hmm. Let's see if we have to. Oh, it says off right now, so maybe I have to. There we go. Okay. 
So this is our low indicator. So I'm going to set that at 10 feet. Uh, if we're below that while we're taxiing, it'll tell us. And I don't really want to go, I, I don't know what type of enemy threats uh, will be in the area. So let's not go higher than, let's say 500 feet. All right. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, we need to uh, twist the throttle to full RPM. Switch generator to standby. Uh, set radio intercom, uh, or set the radio to intercom, so INT, so we could talk to uh, ground crew. You could also have the doors open to talk to the ground crew, but it'll be noisy. Rearm, and let's just go with the miniguns. And in the Huey, uh, always lower your fuel. I think 50% 50, 50 is usually a really good place to uh, to start. A Mile says, I didn't know that custom kneeboards were even a thing. That's amazing. Need that in my life. Yeah, it's it's such a game changer because I, I used to do what probably everybody else does, which is have a notebook next to me of every single thing that I have to press. And this is just so much easier. And I'll even do like weapons and how to implement them and radios and you know whatever I just feel like I need to have at my fingertips uh, I'll put here all right uh, we did that set radio countermeasures to arm so my countermeasures weren't working yesterday I might want to test that uh, before we take off just to make sure we're in a good place I believe it just has to go to armed and it has to be To red, I think that's right. Oh, I might have to set this too. Wait, actually, I'm stupid. That's what the problem is. That turns the countermeasures on. That's the flare counter. That's how many I'll have fired. All right. This isn't very professional, but I'm gonna pop one off just to see if it works. Good. Important to have. All right, so we set our radio, countermeasure, keep weight, yep, yep, yep. All right, so now let's figure out our uh, ATC channel here, so F10. Zoom in. Radio here is 128. So we will go to VHF com and turn it on no. Okay. And then one two uh, one two eight. And now we have to switch our radio selector to VHF AM, which is number three. And then if I do right alt and backslash VHS AM ATC Krasnodar, request startup. Alright, and one other thing that we're going to do too, is since we don't have very sophisticated navigational aids in the Huey, I am going to tune our ADF to the airport, so this way no matter where we fly to, our automatic direction finder will always point back to the airport and if we need to bug out we'll know exactly which way to go. So I'm going to tune into the inner NDB which is 240. So we're going to go down to our ADF. We're going to switch it to ADF 240 so that'll be in the first band here. And now we just need to scroll wheel for an hour. I think I said 240, so we'll see that we'll see this little gauge pop up when I get there. And we should hear some Morse code. We 
could hear the mouse code or Morse code and that thick line is pointing to the NDB which is basically pointing to the beginning of the runway so as we fly away from here it's going to point behind us and now we'll know exactly which way to go to get back home without having to press F10 which is completely impossible while flying a chopper we got our guys in the back looks good let us uh, turn on our lighting Pito heat green light on the interior anti-collision light on exterior lights and let's see how that looks all right looking good all right now comes to flying it I'm just going to preface by saying I don't know what the hell I'm doing, so don't have high expectations of me. So we're here, runway 23 is here, so we're just going to kind of hover and, and get over in this location. Alright, so the way I find best to fly this is I'm, I'm going to slowly start increasing throttle. The helicopter is going to want to twist to the right. So I'm going to just start to dial in a little bit of rudder and just keep countering it. And I'm just going to focus on basically my radar altimeter. Um, also, the chopper is going to have a natural tendency to tip forward and pull us forward. So as I'm countering my rudder, I want to kind of lean back on the stick. I'm not going to do it right, but that's my intention is to basically try to take off uh, straight. It's just, it's just slow, deliberate inputs. It's not going crazy. So slowly increasing throttle, slowly, slowly. I'm watching the ground at my feet. I can see that the helicopter is starting to creep a little bit. So counter rudder just a little bit. A little bit more. Pull back on the stick so we don't start flying forward. A little bit more throttle. All right, not bad, not bad. And we can see in our radar altimeter, we're about 20 feet up. So we're just going to creep toward the runway. Keeping a lot of backward pressure on the stick right now so we don't start flying too fast. Not moving the throttle at all anymore. I'm just watching my radar altimeter gauge. I can see it's at 2. So we're at tw a consistent 20 feet. Just letting go a little bit of the back pressure when I slow down too much. Alright. Now I'm going to let go of the rudder and that's going to naturally spin us. Now that I'm realigned, add that rudder back in. All right, now I'm gonna try to call ATC and oh, I didn't mean to do inbound. I thought he was gonna tell us to take off, but us lifting off the ground must have convinced him otherwise. That's fine. We'll act like he said take off. So we're just gonna slide up here. And Lost my concentration a little bit, but it's okay. All right. And now I'm just going to throttle up. Not full throttle. But just enough to get us up and going. Now an amazing feature, if you haven't used it, you must get to get to learning it, is the trim switch. So the way I'm going to use the trim switch right now is I'm going to get us level and having no vertical speed up and down. So I'm kind of watching that gauge right there. So I'm going to dip my nose a little bit, 
A little bit more. A little bit more. All right, right about there. I'm pushing the trim switch up. Now I've let go of the stick. And basically what's happened is it's holding the stick in that forward position. And now if you've ever flown the Huey, you have to wrestle with it. Right now, the, the stick is completely loose in my hand. I'm just gently, I, I'm not, I have no pressure. I'm just nudging it around. And the trim stick is keeping me in this relatively forward dipped uh, level flight. And now I'm just nudging it around. I, I just took my hand completely off the stick right now. It's, it's flying beautifully, no problems. So the trim switch is your friend. And then if I press uh, on my hat key down, that would shut it off and we'd be back down to normal. Okay, anyway. So now let's get our uh, crew all situated. So what we need to do is use the um, left alt three and four to open our side doors. So left alt four, three, done. I'm gonna close my kneeboard for a second. And now we're gonna hold left control three to do free fire, free fire, and now left control and two and now the co-pilot will free fire. So everybody's just gonna start opening up uh, when we see something. Now the uh, co-pilot is gonna have much better range than the door gunners because he's got the scope. So as we come in on something, he'll light it up and then we'll go passing by and the door gunners won't shoot. I find you have to be much less than half a mile away from the target for the door gunners to do anything. You have to basically be right over them. Uh, but that's fine, we'll, we'll adjust accordingly. Uh, Miles says, I learned more about the Huey and interaction with DCS systems in the past 10 minutes than, than I have in the last year of trial and error. Nice. <laughs> well, I'm glad it's, it's, it's helpful. Uh, again, I don't know what I'm doing either, but sometimes when you just see somebody else not knowing what they're doing and at least saying what they're doing while they don't know what they're doing, you kind of go, oh, all right. Uh, that confirms my suspicion as well. <laughs> Alright, so right now it's very easy to fly. I'm just, um, I'm in a neutral position with the stick, watching my vertical speed. Uh, I can kick up the throttle a little bit to add lift right now, or pull back the throttle if I want to fly, fly um, level. So I'm really using the throttle right now to decide how high up I am. Looking at the exhaust gas, te de gas temperature, you never want the needle in the red. If it's in the red, your engine will catch fire and you will die. So we can see an enemy chopper tag up ahead. We can also see our solid line is pointing behind us. So when we want to bug out back toward the airport, we know exactly which way to fly. So I'll flip our master caution off, reset. So I think we'll just circle um, Kranz at our center and see if there's any bad units there and let the door gunners do their thing. I'm not going to shoot. Uh, I'm just going to concentrate on flying. Again, we don't know if there's any infrared here or what the air defenses are, so don't want to get too high. We'll kind of play in these buildings and then worst case scenario, we could always dip down and fire some flares. And right now, like the gauge I'm paying the most amount, of, the most attention to is my vertical speed gauge, so that guy just making sure it's even uh, so we're not kind of falling to the ground or anything and I'm just using the throttle to uh, adjust for that very tiny uh, increases or decreases and we can also uh, look at our um, radar altimeter so we have that uh, bug set for 500 so if we get below that uh, it'll light up and then we'll know uh, we're flying a little too low Occasional look at the exhaust temp gauge and make sure we're okay, but 
I find by putting your fuel down to 50%, uh, you rarely stress the motor out, if ever. Uh, whereas you take off with a fuel fu full fuel load and then a whole bunch of weapons, uh, it's actually really hard to keep it uh, cool. Alright, so I see one of the tags out there says man pads, so that's going to be a threat. And now I'm going to debate, should we just try to avoid it altogether? I think maybe let's go this way for now. I want to kind of keep my eyes out that way to make sure he's not going to light us up. I'm choosing to go this way is I just want to be able to keep um, that man pads in my front window so I could see it come in and also keep our exhaust gas uh, not facing him. Uh, while we're doing this right now, I'm also going to kill our external lights. No reason to let them know where we're at. toward him a little bit. Again, just keeping an eye on our vertical speed, radar altitude, etc. Try and move fast before an air threat gets in here, uh, gets over here too, and tries to take us out of the sky. Don't see anything yet, though. All right, so I do see a command post, so I'm gonna come off the throttle here a little bit, try to slow down some. So I'm just giving some backward stick right now and enough throttle to not lose vertical speed. And just try to slow it, woe us down here. There we go. Just try to give a stable flight right now so the gunner could do his thing. a couple flares as we turn because it won't know what's going on behind us. Alright, so I think we could probably do uh, another pass. That was a good angle to come through. little uh, field that kind of runs the length to our right. So I think I'll turn back in and just follow that field in.
door gun is firing. Alright, gonna make a right, flaring. See tracer fire, they're shooting at us. Looks like uh, we got a kill down there. Check our flare count. It's not working. I think we have to set it up uh, before the flight actually put it up and then it counts down. So, my mistake, but such is life. Still learning. Alright, so I think we'll just do another pass like that. I mean, that seemed pretty good. Don't see any enemy aircraft anywhere. Our left door gunner is bored. So I'm gonna make a right-hander. I'm gonna add some throttle in the turn because we'll lose lift as we turn. Coming back off the throttle as we even back out. And litter rip. So I'm not pressing anything to shoot. That's just the the uh, co-pilot and the door gun are doing their own thing. I've just given them permission to fire. They know we're coming this time. I'll just jink. Again, right hander and flare. Add throttle in the turn. Avoid some of this gunfire. Might have gotten hit that time. We're okay. Don't see us smoking at all. And I'm not quite sure yet, um, you know, when the Hummers hurt, what it or <laughs> when the Hueys hurt, what it looks like. We do have a warning. Our inverter seems to be damaged. I'm not sure if there's anything we can do about that. But she's still flying, so I'm going to assume we keep going. Check the temperature gauge. That doesn't seem to be climbing. Right, I'm, not, I'm not smart enough yet with the Huey to know what gauges I should look for. So we're just going to keep going. And I guess the lesson there is let's do our passes a little bit faster, not pick up altitude in the turn right over them where they could shoot at us. Try to expedite this turn, flare. I think go low since we have these trees to high behind. All right, I got another warning. Twenty minutes of fuel, so we must be losing fuel. So let's do one more pass here, and then I think maybe we'll head for home. We'll see. OK, 
in, watching my vertical speed. Throttle back a little bit. Uh-oh. Well, apparently we lost something important. And there it is. Alright, so... With that, um... I think, you know, if, if this was like the SU-25T F-16, something like that, if I would have gotten hit, I think I would have been able to diagnose the problems a little bit better. Based on the inverter going bad and then getting a fuel warning, what I think may have happened is the, the gauge cluster for some of those different things may have just broke. And so when I looked at the fuel gauge, uh, we still had what I thought was plenty of fuel, and then I think it might have just uh, ran out of gas there or maybe something seized up. Uh, so I think a little bit more learning around, you know, what the different gauges mean, uh, when you get hit, you know, what, what are some things you could do? Maybe I could have switched to a backup inverter. Uh, maybe there's a backup hydraulic system, uh, some things like that. And that's all part of the learning process. Uh, but that was pretty cool, though. I mean, it was fun to kind of plan an attack there, uh, watch the door gunners and the, and the co-pilot uh, do his thing. Uh, this was generally in the area that we were attacking. Maybe we could do kind of a little bit of a BDA here. So I think these were the units that we were, were getting right over here. Yeah, so three kills. Uh, the other two are kind of hiding out in the trees. So not bad. That was, that was actually pretty cool. Um, so that's basically it. I mean, that's that's how to play the server. Come in and just kind of kind of go for something and and do it. Uh, Let's see, the mighty Guybrush says, do you ever fly the Gazelle? Would love to see some of that. So I haven't included the Gazelle in the mission yet. Uh, most, so it, it, I'm trying to keep it blue versus red and currently it's all uh, US units against Russia units. However, I was considering like, would it make sense to add the Gazelle? But nobody's asked that. I don't personally own it. Um, and I hear that the gazelle from people that have flown it feel it's a little bit twitchy. I don't know what that means, uh, as, as having never flown it. Um, but but it seems that that the the K uh, the KA50 everybody seems to think is a little too easy. Uh, the gazelle doesn't feel like it weighs anything. It just kind of the, the stick is very kind of flop around or, or very fly by wire. Um, and the MI-8, I, I don't know any feedback for. And then the Huey, I think everybody says, is just very much a, a manual flight. Like you're really having to to uh, get on the stick and, and control it. Uh, so I would say if, if you're a Gazelle pilot or somebody interested in doing it, uh, it's not ha hard for me to add it to the server. Um, and yeah, I, I wouldn't mind giving it a shot uh, and buying it. Like I just missed the big DCS uh, sale to uh to grab all the different things but so he says it will try and kill you at every chance and flies like a sports car that sounds about right uh, that that's kind of what i would expect from it i think the i think the huey kind of flies like a i don't know a 1986 firebird that some teenager last owned and hasn't had an alignment done on it and maybe maybe since it came from the factory uh it, it's rickety but once you have the trim switch figured out, it could fly so nice. And Mighty says, uh, but so rewarding to get the gazelle right. I, I'm starting to feel the same way about the Huey. So that was really only my second, third flight in it so far. Um, but to me, the game changer was the trim switch. Uh, once you have that down and it just kind of auto trims for you and you're no longer fighting to keep it in the air, but now you're just nudging it along on the trim uh, is actually really nice. Uh, give me one second here. Uh, so <clears throat> as part of the um, YouTube uh, recording for this, uh, this is just going to be added to the uh, mission playlist as something that you could do to come in and join the mission and do something uh, impactful. Uh, so again, you know, just uh, joining the server, kind of taking a look at what's going on, 
using the Discord and the uh, daily objectives to figure out what exactly is up, and that'll give you some ideas what to do, and then just uh, hop behind the uh, uh, joystick and, and make something happen. Um, so if there's any questions or comments, please let me know, but I will keep the stream going uh, as well in the meantime.